Hi there. So, a little birdie tells me that you are planning a trip to Florida. Fantastic. You're going to have a great time. I mean, I've been there, done it, and quite literally got the t-shirt. So, if you're planning to go to Florida, if it's your first time or it's your tenth, I've got some tips that I've picked up on a few trips to Florida myself that I want to share with you. We're going to break this video down into various sections. Uh, you can check in the description for the times each section starts. We're going to do it park by park as well as a couple of other bits. Uh, so, you don't have to see the bits you don't need to see. So, if you're not going to Disney, you can ignore the Disney section. Just check the description. It'll tell you what's in the video and what time each bit starts. So, let's get on with it. Okay, so the first thing you've got to do before you travel is check all of your tickets to make sure there's no discrepancies uh, and inform the travel operator immediately if you find any. This is very important. You will also need an ESTA, which stands for Electronic System for Travel Authorization. Uh, it's nice and simple to do. All you have to do is go to usembassy.org.uk. The link will be in the description below. Uh, also, it's a good idea to photocopy your theme park tickets and passport before you travel and then pass them on to a relative or friend just in case something happens. Uh, buy all of your theme park tickets before you travel rather than when you get to Florida. It's going to be a hell of a lot cheaper for you and a lot more convenient. Uh, just remember, all tickets uh, that are going to show the date are going to do so in the American format. Month, then day, then year. Not the other way, not day, then month, because that confuses a lot of people when they see it. This can't be right. Oh, if a child's ticket will require a signature, you can sign on their behalf. Don't worry. Travelling in Florida is very easy by car. You don't have to worry about that at all. But what you do need to bear in mind is that the trunk, or boot, uh, is a lot smaller on many American cars than it is on the European equivalent. So make sure you bear this in mind when you're booking your car, because upgrades at the airport can be quite costly. Take as little as you can get away with in terms of toiletries, just to say weight and space in your bag, because they're just so cheap in the supermarkets, like Walmart, Target, Publix, or any of the other ones. Good idea when you get to Orlando International Airport's immigration area to take the right-hand queue. Why? Because if there's space, after all the Americans have gone through, you might get called over to use one of the US immigration desks, thus saving you a bit of time. Remember to fill out your customs forms on the plane so you can save a bit of time and enjoy your holiday a little bit sooner. Okay, so this section is all going to be about driving around in Florida. Now, there are some bus laws as well that are very confusing to most British tourists, uh, but they're going to be in a separate section because there's a hell of a lot to go into that section. So driving around in Florida is just going to be this one. So no bus laws yet. Uh, that will be towards the end of the video. Uh, so the first thing, if you are hiring a car, then drivers should have their, both their photo ID and their paper ID with them uh, when you go to the desk. Uh, it, it's an easy mistake to make, that one. Uh, and to save time at the airport, uh, this works at pretty much every airport in Florida, uh, you should send your main driver down to the rental desk uh, to get the car sorted, whilst the rest of you... Uh, wait for the baggage, because that way, if you, especially if you're with someone like Alamo and you get, first, you get to choose your car, you get first dibs ahead of everybody else, and that's quite important you get the best cars. Think carefully about the type of insurance that you're going to need, and don't be tempted into buying anything a bit more expensive at the travel desk, because, well, it's kind of their job to sell you that kind of stuff, so don't, don't be tempted, just stick with it. All rental car bookings will require a credit card upon arrival. Also, it's a good idea to inspect the car that you've chosen, or been assigned to, uh, for any scratches, dents, dings, anything like that, uh, and report anything you find to the rental company before you leave. It's also potentially a good idea to take photos of it. American cars are automatic, so if you're a Brit and you haven't really driven one before, <laughs> you're in good company, do take a little moment to familiarise yourself with the layout. It can be a little bit confusing at times. Don't worry. You're in good company there. Uh, it's also a good idea to plan your route from the airport to your hotel, wherever you're staying, uh, before you get there, sat-navs and Google Maps both fare pretty well out there. This one's confusing for most British tourists, especially when they first arrive in Florida. Unless a sign says you can't, you can actually turn right on a red light. It's also uh, a good idea to have some dollar bills handy in the car, and also some quarters. Uh, for Orlando's toll roads, it's going to be very handy to save you a lot of bother. Always write down the location of your car in the car parks. Uh, you know, you may think, oh, that'll be easy to remember. It isn't. And you've got to remember that the car park for the Magic Kingdom at Disney is bigger than Alton Towers in the UK. The biggest theme park in the country fits into their parking lot. Uh, also, to make it a little bit easier to find your car, 
Uh, it's probably a good idea to tie a ribbon or something. I've seen people tie balloons to their cars or put a large non-valuable item in the window. It just makes it a little bit easier. All the parks, with the exception of Disney, will offer preferred parking options. Uh, I'm to park nearer to the gate uh, for a fee, and that does vary from park to park. Uh, stop signs are much more stringently enforced than they are in the UK and most of Europe. You must ensure that your car comes to a full and complete stop before continuing, even if the road ahead is clear. And, as I said before, the bus laws are a little bit complicated, so uh, we'll come back to them in a separate section. <laughs> Okay, so this section is all about general park advice. So this is going to be advice that can really apply to any park in Florida. Uh, so not just the Disney, not just the Universal, not just SeaWorld, uh, but all of the parks as well. So you may, this may be a bit of common sense here, but, uh, you know, a little help. Uh, so the first thing is don't go with the flow. You're just going to be in lines all damn day. You don't want to go with the flow. You want to be sort of out of synchronization with everybody else. So uh, avoid the early morning rush uh, and uh, go straight to the back of the park and work your way around anti-clockwise uh, because you should, in theory, at least for the morning, encounter shorter lines uh, than everybody else who's going the conventional way. Uh, also, try to save the most popular rides for last and sort of late evening, late afternoon, early evening, because the lines will be a lot shorter then, you'll get a lot more stuff. Uh, on the subject of that, if you have a 14-day ticket, then it's a good idea to visit the parks in the evenings when the lines will be considerably shorter. Uh, try to avoid the major parks on the busy days. Uh, there are plenty of sites online that will uh, tell you what the busy days are uh, for each different park. Uh, but generally, the big theme parks are quieter on Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays. However, avoid the water parks on Wednesdays. They do seem to be a little bit busier on those days. Use Disney's Fast Pass Plus throughout your entire trip if you're going to Disney. This is a free service that allows you to book uh, Fast Passes where you can skip the line, or well, most of the line, uh, taking a much shorter queue. It's a good idea to uh, take the kids' swimming gear as well. Uh, even if you don't have a pool at your hotel, if your hotel site doesn't say you have a pool, it's a good idea because most of the parks will include cool-down areas to splash around in and cause a bit of mayhem, as kids do. Tipping in the USA is expected to always add 15 to 20% to your bill. Uh, also, it's a good idea to carry a uh, photographic ID with you wherever you go. Just remember, uh, if you look under 35, you will be asked for identification when trying to buy alcohol. 35! Now take that as a compliment. Here's a tip that a lot of people, they, they hear about and they, they go, yeah, 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 I know. They still break it anyway. Don't try to do everything on your first trip to Florida. It doesn't work. We, I've done it. I, I, pretty much everybody's guilty of it. Sure, go to Florida, you think, yeah, Florida. Can do everything. Don't do it. Okay? Just do some. Do some, like do Disney and Universal. Don't try and do every single part because you'll be too busy rushing around to have fun. And also, it's a good idea to leave some stuff for when you come back, because I wasn't going to Disney, you know, Florida once. I've been back far too many times. It sounds really obvious, this one, but take comfy shoes. It's a good idea to take two pairs as well, uh, in case one gets absolutely soaked on a ride, but two pairs of comfy shoes, uh, because you're going to be spending a lot of the time on your feet, around 14 hours a day if you really want to go for it in the theme parks. Uh, although mobility scooters are available for hire for around $60 to $80. Always arrange a meeting place in case your party gets separated. This is true for the parties of just adults as well as adults and kids. It is quite important. These parks are enormous, some of them. It's definitely worth getting to the parks early uh, to get on the busiest rides first before they absolutely fill up. Uh, and also it's a good idea to get a times guide and park map. It'll show you where you need to go and all the times of everything. So, uh, you know... If a ride opens at a different time to the rest of the park, it's a good idea to check that first. Biometric identification is used on all tickets by all theme parks. You will have your fingerprints scanned uh, to prevent fraudulent use of your ticket. Don't be scared to plan a rest day, to re-energise, because you'll be knackered by the end of it. I know. Um, but yeah, you know, a good spot for a rest day is Jetty Park in Cape Canaveral. It's a wonderful place. Uh, it's about $10 a day for parking, I think it is. It's right near Cocoa Beach. Uh, and if you want to watch a manatee and turtles and dolphins and everything else, that's a really nice place and a fantastic beach as well. It's a good idea to wear water shoes to, you know, protect against the really hot concrete surrounding swimming pools. Or flip-flops, they work as well. Buy a poncho to stay a bit drier on some of the wet rides, although some, such as Popeye and Bluto's build rack barges and Universal's Islands of Adventure, <laughs> poncho's not going to save you. Not a chance.
take sealable plastic bags to keep the valuables dry on the water rides, particularly on the rapids, and especially on Popeye and Blue Toes Bilge Rat barges. Oh my god. Also, it's a good idea to buy a waterproof camera, or if you've got a camera, buy a waterproof housing for it. Uh, it'll survive the water rides and provide you with some absolutely fantastic photos and videos in the process. Uh, it's also a good idea to buy your drinks at the supermarket or make your own, rather than buying them at the, dr at the parks, because, let's be honest here, it's the same everywhere. Theme parks are expensive. If you're going to make your own drinks, which is what I would recommend, uh, it's a good idea to try freezing them the night before you go to the park so that they'll stay cool all day. Make sure you store all your valuables in lockers, or leave them with a non-rider. Many, many phones and cameras have met unfortunate ends by falling off roller coasters, and then if that does happen, they have to, you know, close the ride to retrieve the stuff, and everybody gets quite angry with you, because I've been one of those angry people once. So, yeah, leave them with a non-ride, particularly Bush Gardens will have a big sign with some broken phones in it saying, don't take them on, just don't. Uh, also, Disney's FastPass Plus system will allow you to book your fast passes up to 120 days in advance uh, of when you're going to each park. So, you know, some of the big rides like Seven Dwarfs Mine Train and the parades and the fireworks, they sell out weeks in advance. So it's a good idea to get on there as quickly as you can. Next up, this is a very uh, short section. It's all about the money here. Okay, so just trying to save you a little bit of money on your holiday to make the most of it. Uh, the first thing, when you order your currency before you even travel, it's a good idea to order some smaller denominations, because this will really save you a lot of bother at the, at the restaurants and at the toll roads and at the bars. I mean, nobody wants to be handed a $100 bill for a you know, bottle of Coca-Cola. Nobody wants that. No one. Uh, always take a credit card, because some debit cards, like Maestro and Solo, they're not as widely accepted. So it's a good idea to take a credit card. But also, don't forget to add, add sales tax. This is a very important one because it's not included in the price unless it's explicitly stated so. Uh, and it's usually about 7% added onto your price. Uh, to save a bit of money, if you see a piece of merchandise that you like in the parks, don't buy it in the parks. Buy it at the flea markets or Walmart or Target or Publix or any of those supermarkets or flea markets are usually pretty good for that kind of stuff. So uh, do that. Uh, but also Orlando International Airport has numerous uh, NASA, Universal and Disney and SeaWorld shops. Uh, so do hold a little bit of money back, uh, because, you know, you can usually get a bit of a discount there. They want to sell you something, I want to buy something. Okay, so this uh, section is going to be the Magic Kingdom at Disney. Uh, the busiest ride by a mile is the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, because it's the newest. Uh, so go there first, or book via Fast Pass, although this one does sell out uh, as the Fast Pass is weeks in advance. Uh, Wishes fireworks display and the electric parade are definitely well worth viewing. They're both at night. They are stunning. Usually the electric parade uh, is followed by Wishes. Uh, it's just spectacular and well worth a watch. Uh, also visit the most popular rides during the parades and shows. So pick up a times guide, as I said earlier, uh, to know when those shows are. Uh, because the lines will be shorter. A lot of people will be looking at the shows and parades. So you can just sneak off around the back and get to the rides uh, and experience a slightly shorter wait time. Uh, don't carry your souvenirs around all day. So many people do this. Don't carry your souvenirs around all day, okay? Don't do it. Don't be silly. Just pick them up before you leave on Main Street USA. It, it just makes life so much easier. It's a lot less to worry about. Just remember to buy it, obviously, at the end of the day. So at off-peak times, you can often sit with the driver at the very front of the monorail. Just ask when boarding. Uh, you can also be a guard on the monorail, or your kids can at the very least. Uh, you will get to be shouting all aboard, and you will get a little certificate to keep at the end of it. Uh, so if your kids want to do that, good on them. The new Fantasyland area uh, was built a few years ago, rebuilt the entire section. Uh, it is absolutely heaving a couple of hours after the park opens, so, you know... <laughs> Oh my god, get there quick, or leave it till late, because uh, that place is heaving, especially on on-peak periods. Uh, by the way, Fantasyland is straight on past the behind the castle as you enter the park. Uh, if you want to stay dry on Splash Mountain, then sit to on the left. If you want to get wet, stick, uh, stick yourself on the right. If you want to get somebody else in your party wet, well, you know exactly what you have to do here. Stick them on the right. Just between us. You can ask the, ask the uh, Harley Skipper of the Liberty Bell if you can take control. Oh, well, your kids can, anyway. Uh, you'll get a little certificate saying that you did it, uh, and that will allow you to do it any time for a year once again. 
So uh, if, if you kids fancy that, ask nicely and Disney should be able to do it. At least they did last time I was aware of it. Contrary to popular belief, Main Street USA is not the best place in the park to view the parades. Uh, the best viewing points are in Frontierland and Liberty Square. Uh, if there are two performances of the same parade throughout the day, go for the second one. It's generally less crowded, uh, although for the best view of the Wishes fireworks display, then go behind the Partners statue on Main Street USA. Uh, alternatively, if you arrive really early, go to the uh, go to the train station at the far end of Main Street USA, uh, by the park entrance, you'll get a great view looking down it at the castle and up in the air, the fireworks. Uh, it's a fantastic view, but it does get busy very quickly. That one is one of the first to disappear, that and the partner's statue. Uh, at the end of the day, after the fireworks, everybody goes at the same time, so avoid the crowds by taking the monorail instead of the ferry. Uh, and finally, Stitch's Great Escape will have warnings outside it. It has always done, uh, but this may be a frightening attraction for children. Disney don't like to do these kind of uh, signs. They like to have all their attractions being very family-friendly. Uh, so it's a good idea for an adult to take uh, go on it first, so that the kids, you know, th they kind of know what's going on with the kids. So, uh, but generally, uh, there are moments in complete darkness and special effects that younger people may find a little bit scary. So it's a good idea, as I said, to send an adult on first. Okay, so these next few ones are going to be about Epcot, the experimental prototype community of tomorrow. Uh, the busiest rides are Test Track and Soarin', so you might want to go to these first or book via Fastpass to avoid some of the larger queues. However, Test Track does have a rather nice after-ride area, which can be accessed through the gift shop to the right of the main entrance of the ride. Uh, here, you've got the gift shop. You can design your own cars using your park tickets anyway, um, and you can have some very silly photos taken with uh, a lot of uh, Chevrolet products currently on the market. Um, and if you're a British tourist, you'll know just how silly these can get, because we have a very different sense of humour. And the number of times I've ended up lying under one of these cars being run over. There's quite a few, actually. Uh, the Illuminations Reflections of Earth firework display is simply spectacular, and you have to see it at least once during your holidays. Uh, if you're going to Christmas, oh my god, uh, they add an extra finale onto it, and they also do during Independence Day, which make it even more spectacular than normal. It is amazing, and will completely ruin British firework displays for you forever. Uh, the Spaceship Earth, which is in the big ball at the entrance, uh, has a queue that moves pretty much constantly. It's a very, uh, you know, moving queue because the uh, cars in the ride are constantly moving, so the queue will move very quickly. So that can be visited pretty much any time of day, um, but there are some sort of peak areas for it that you may wish to avoid. Uh, the single rider queue at Test Track also moves very quickly because it's got six to a car. That's kind of an odd number to have, so the single rider queue moves very quickly. Most people arrive in groups of two and four, so your quid's in, really, if you go in the single rider queue. Mission Space uh, does have two versions of the ride. It offers a less intense version for people who may not be sure or may not want to experience the full intense version of Mission Space. Uh, to access the less intense version, then just ask for a green ticket at the ride entrance. It'll give you either an orange or a green. Ask for the green one for the less intense. The two rides are broadly the same, green and orange, the more intense and less intense. Uh, the difference is that the green version, the less intense one, does not include G-forces, whereas orange will subject its riders to 2.5G at various points in the ride. Uh, Spaceship Earth's queue is often a bit longer in the morning, so do, do that one in the afternoon. Uh, and also keep an eye out. This, I've had many people say this one to me. Uh, keep it out for the talking trash can in the Electric Umbrella restaurant. Uh, it's also been occasionally spotted at Tomorrowland in the Magic Kingdom, but uh, most of the t most sightings seem to be around the Electric Umbrella in Epcot, so do keep uh, an eye out for that. Uh, there's also a talking fountain at the Imagination Pavilion. There are some fountains near the Test Track area, so as you approach, you'll go in the park, they'll be on the left, uh, and then to get to Test Track, and then they'll be straight ahead of you, uh, as you approach Test Track, uh, there's some fountains uh, for the kids to splash around and cool down in, so do take either a change of clothes and a towel and stuff, uh, and maybe even some swim gear for that. Uh, and also it is best to arrive at your viewing spot for illuminations more than an hour before it's due to start. Uh, this, all the best spots, sort of Norway and Mexico are very popular spots, Italy is a very popular spot, uh, these will disappear first, so it's a good idea to get your spot 
nice and early because there is some stuff at ground level as well as in the sky so it's a good idea to uh, sort that out nice and early. Okay so this section is all about Disney's Hollywood Studios although if you've been there uh, quite a while ago you may remember it as Disney's MGM Studios. There's a lot of uh, changes going on in this park so some of this stuff may be up out of date by the time this video even goes up because there's a lot of work going on in that park. Uh, but firstly, Toy Story Midway Mania is by far and away the busiest ride in the park. Uh, it's right <laughs> across from the entrance, so do that one first, or nap a fast pass, although this one also sells out very early. Uh, the other two busy rides are Rock and Roller Coaster starring Aerosmith and Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. They are next to each other, uh, over on the right as you walk in. Um, so you may want to get fast passes for them as well. There are also some fantastic shows at the Hollywood Studios. Uh, my personal favourites are the Lights, Motors, Action, Extreme Stunt Show, and the Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular. Uh, I cannot recommend the Frozen Show because it's frozen. Sorry. Uh, if there are two showings of the Fantasmic uh, Show, which is also very good, during your visit, then do do the second one because it is the quieter of the two. You're more likely to get a decent seat. Uh, when exiting Fantasmic, uh, go down the stairs to the front and then exit. Uh, there'll be a shorter walk for you because it'll be the end of a long day. So uh, I'm trying to save you a few steps here. Uh, whilst Fantasmic is on, though, queues for Rock and Roller Coaster starring Aerosmith, Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, and Toy Story Midway Mania, and all the other rides fall massively. It takes a huge number of people, Fantasmic, uh, so you will really start to notice the drop in the queue times. You can just go round and round and round Rock and Roller Coaster on single rider. Which is what I do. Uh, but also, don't miss a tribute to the one man who started it all, Walt Disney. Uh, because Walt Disney, one man's dream, is it near the Pixar area next to Toy Story Mid May Mania. Uh, and <laughs> you kind of have to do it. It's, it's one of those uh, ones you have to do. It does include uh, a lot of rather interesting stuff, as well as a film about Walt Disney's life. So the next uh, group of tips and tricks is about Animal Kingdom, which is the largest theme park of them all in Disney, uh, due to the uh, Kilimanjaro Safaris area being as big as the Magic Kingdom itself, bolted onto the side of another great big theme park. Uh, so Expedition Everest is the busiest ride here, but I don't recommend doing this one first. The best strategy is to do Kilimanjaro Safaris first. It's cooler, and more of the animals will be visible and more active. Uh, then go off and do Expedition Everest. Uh, Expedition Everest does have a single rider line. It is not very well advertised. It is next to the gift shop uh, and has a single solitary sign and a cast member outside it, usually with a parasol above them. Uh, it's often a lot shorter than the main line or even the fast pass line, so do check out that single rider queue. Uh, the Festival of the Lion King and Flights of Wonder are two shows that you should definitely check out. They're both reasonably short uh, and very entertaining shows. Uh, the animal walks are also good during uh, the you know, the busier times of the day, uh, because there's no queuing for them, you walk around at your own pace, um, and they're, you know, a great way to spend time, uh, and you can get some fantastic close-up views of tigers and gorillas, it really is a wonderful uh, way of doing it, and if you've done the Chessington Walk of, whatever it's called, the uh, Chessington Walk of Animals, um, this will show you just how, how it should be done. Dinosaur does have warnings about it uh, being potentially scary for children riding it, so it's a good idea to send an adult in first uh, to see if, if a kid would like it. Uh, Disney doesn't really take these warnings lightly, they don't like giving them out. Uh, but Dinosaur is a large, it features large, loud dinosaurs. It's a very fast, jerky ride with portions in complete darkness. Uh, and yes, those dinosaurs are very, very loud in there, so that may be one to watch. <laughs> Okay, so we've now left Disney, we're into Universal Studios Resort, and we're going to start with the Universal Studios Florida uh, section. Uh, so, when approaching the car parks, always take the left lane. Uh, this is the much quicker route, when the two lanes eventually merge. Uh, you cannot take bags on any of the rides, so use the lockers outside them, or leave them with a non-rider. Uh, Shrek 4D does offer non-moving seats, just ask the cast member for details. Uh, Despicable Me Minion Mayhem also offers non-moving seats. Uh, when you enter the main building, there will be some signs that say non-moving seats. Just move towards them. Don't forget to check out your personal ride photos, or even personal ride video. That means Rip Ride Rocket. Yes, the tall, whacking great one designed to look like a treble clef from the air. Rip Ride Rocket is a stunning ride, uh, and it does film you as well. You get to choose your own music as well. That will be explained in another video, I'm sure. 
Uh, but it films you, so smile. Okay, so now we go on to the second of the Universal theme parks in Orlando, uh, Islands of Adventure. I'm going to start with the amazing Spider-Man uh, in the Marvel area, uh, which is both spectacular and suitable for the entire family. So uh, it does include some spinning, but that shouldn't be too much. Uh, also, if, if only a couple of you wish to ride the Incredible Hulk Coaster, which is pretty much next door, uh, or the Dragon Challenge, formerly known as Dueling Dragons, uh, then it's worth both of you just going into the single rider line. You'll get on it about three times rather than on once. Uh, side by side, so it's definitely worth it. You're most likely to get on the same train as each other. Also, at the exit of Dragon Challenge, so if you come up through the exit of Dragon Challenge, uh, there's a nice viewing area for those who do not wish to ride to wait for the people taking ages queuing up. Also, at the exit of Dragon Challenge, if you've just been on the ride and want to go again, uh, then look out for the, on the right as you leave the main building. There should be a path there which will take you up uh, just past the crashed Ford Anglia is where you'll rejoin the queue. So you're just outside the main building again when you re-enter the queue line. It saves a little bit of a walk, probably doesn't save you that much time, but it's certainly a nice thing. Uh, Dragon Challenge is, by the way, two different rides. Two very different rides. So you do kind of have to do both here. Uh, the Ice and Fire, as they used to be known, or I can't remember what they are since they changed it to Harry Potter, but they are different rides. Uh, also, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter is more than just one ride. It is an entire mini theme park, so you have to go and check that out. Um, although, it does get absolutely ridiculously busy in peak periods, especially when they keep adding new things like the uh, Hogwarts Express. seems to have kick-started everything again. Um, with half-hour queues to get into the shops on occasion, that was when it first opened. So, be prepared for complete manic uh, complete meltdown here. Popeye and Bluto's build rat barges will soak you. If you've got a poncho, if you haven't, if you believe in luck, the force, doesn't matter. You are getting absolutely soaked. And it is fantastic because in Florida it's probably about 30 degrees Celsius. You'll dry in about five minutes. And then you do it again. Uh, also, don't pay for the water cannons near the start and end of Popeye and Bluto's build rat barges because it's a con. All you have to, as you enter, you'll see. A large blue ship uh, on the right, just go up to there. It also has as a play area for kids, but it has three cannons that are free of charge at the top. So, guess what I do? <laughs> uh, also, both Universal and Islands of Adventure parks have shops at the exit. They'll sell discounted goods, and it may be worth having a nosy before you leave the park uh, to save just a little bit of money. <laughs> Okay, so now we move on to SeaWorld Parks and Entertainment. So, SeaWorld's going to be the first one, obviously. Uh, so, make sure you pick up a park map on your way in, because it will have all the show times on it as well. Uh, and if you don't fancy the Manta roller coaster, some people don't, uh, which is basically like Air at Alton Towers, is as close as I can get to it. It is kind of the next step for Air. But there is also an aquarium housed underneath the ride uh, that may be worth a view if you don't particularly want to do the ride. Uh, when, if you do do the ride, uh, then it kind of cuts a little bit through the aquarium, the queue line, so uh, you get a little bit of a taste for it. Uh, also, unless you absolutely you know, want to get completely soaked, avoid Shamu's splash zones. Uh, at various points in the park you can uh, feed sea lions and dolphins and stingrays, um, so uh, it's not included in the price of admission, but there are various points where you can do that. The Antarctic uh, Antarctica Empire of the Penguin ride does have two variations, a more intense and a less intense. Just pick a queue for that, uh, depending on what you want to do. There's also a baby care centre in the Shamu's Happy Harbour area, uh, with top-of-the-line changing facilities and private feeding rooms, if that's what you need. Uh, also, arrange to have lunch during one of the shows, as the lines will be considerably shorter, or go on the rides during one of the shows. Again, the lines will be shorter. Uh, and also, a lot of people have recommended this to me, uh, and I completely agree with it. The Blue Horizon show at SeaWorld is simply spectacular and is not to be missed. It is wonderful. Okay, so next up is Bush Gardens, which uh, is down in Tampa and probably the furthest away of all of the parks that we're going to be looking at. It's around an hour to an hour and a half away from Orlando's theme park, Heartland. Uh, but Cheetah Hunt and Shikra are the busiest of the two rides, uh, sorry, the two busiest rides at this park, so consider doing those first. 
Uh, also, the behind-the-scenes tours, they're not very well advertised, they're absolutely spectacular. Uh, this channel does feature a couple of the behind-the-scenes tours, the orangutans and the tigers have so far been included on the behind-the-scenes stuff. Uh, they're really, really wonderful uh, and well worth checking out. They're badly advertised, but do uh, have a looky at them. Uh, also, try to uh, see the animals, uh, you know, when they're most active, obviously. Uh, view them in the morning or evening. It's too hot for the rest of the day. Uh, and it's usually too hot for British tourists as well, so you'll know exactly how those animals feel. Uh, the Congo River Rapids, uh, Tidal Wave and Stanley Falls Flow. <laughs> That'll get you very wet. They've been designed very well to absolutely soak you. Uh, so it's a good idea to try and bring a poncho or buy one in the park if you're not entirely keen on getting soaked. Uh, also, the Sky Ride offers great views of the park and the animals uh, contained within it uh, and offers a very convenient way of getting from A to B. Certainly more convenient than the train, which is very, very slow. Very slow. Don't bother with the train. Uh, also, a baby swap facility is available on most rides at Bush Gardens, uh, so adults can still enjoy them even if they have young kids that are under the height requirement. Hooray! <laughs> Uh, next up is Discovery Cove, the last of the three SeaWorld uh, uh, parks and entertainment parks that we'll be covering in this video. Yay! Uh, but there is a limited capacity of a thousand guests per day at Discovery Cove, which means it's a very exclusive club, but that also means you've got to get you know, quite early. You've got to get there early uh, and book also at least three months in advance. This place is massively popular, particularly with the British tourists, because it's stunning. It really is. Uh, also, check-in begins at 8 a.m., so be sure to get there nice and early. Uh, yeah. uh, all the snacks, food and drink and everything, you know, and meals and stuff, it's all included in the price of admission, which completely messes with people's heads because you can just go up and take stuff. That feels, that feels unnatural to most British tourists. Um, but it, it's a really relaxed park uh, because it's so quiet. There's only a 1,000 guests per day. It's a really personal experience. Uh, and also, pop along to the Avery. Uh, to hand feed the birds, the food for the birds, is included in the price of your admission, because pretty much everything is. Everything except merchandise is included in your admission. So, um, yeah. Make the most of it, people. Uh, also, purchase your dolphin photos about an hour or so before you leave, or before the park closes, uh, to avoid big queues. And uh, that's pretty much it for the uh, SeaWorld Parks and Entertainment. So now we move on to Kissimmee uh, Old Town and Fun Spot USA. <laughs> I do like Old Town and Fun Spot, and uh, quite a few Brits do as well. It's becoming a very popular place. So uh, Fun Spot does actually have two locations. It has one on International Drive, as well as the one on Highway 192 next to Old Town. You can't miss them. They have massive, great swing things. The Sky Coasters. <laughs> if you want to look at the Sky Coasters, then there is a link of me on one in this channel. So check it out. Uh, but free admission and a relaxed atmosphere make uh, Fun Spot one of the perfect places uh, to go for sort of a half day. Uh, so if the pubs get absolutely hammer, you know, jam-packed, come to Fun Spot. It's it's going to be a lot quieter and a lot nicer uh, to do it. Uh, there are plenty of shops uh, in the Old Town area uh, that cater for all tastes, so you know they're well worth a visit and uh, you know can accommodate any kind of price range really. Uh, but both Fun Spot locations have four uh, go kart tracks. Uh, and it's very cheap in comparison to the British stuff, uh, because, for example, an annual pass, which gets you unlimited casting for like 14 hours a day, 365 days a year, uh, is the same price as half, as half an hour karting at uh, Buckmore Park. How do they get away with it being so cheap? How does Buckmore Park get away with it being so expensive, I suppose? But uh, there are many pricing options available at Funspot to suit everybody, uh, but the annual pass is the best value, and if you're there for like a three-week holiday, it's actually worth seriously uh, getting an annual pass, uh, because it does include quite a bit of other stuff with it. Both Fun Spot Parks, as I said earlier, do have a sky coaster, 300 feet, they're the world's tallest, uh, and the price of this is included uh, in your annual pass. This gets you a flight on it, as they call it. But when you do go on the uh, on it, uh, the price of that uh, will also include a t-shirt and a film. The film is on this channel, as I said before, of me on it. <laughs> it's such a great experience, you have to give it a go. Um, but as I say, you get a t-shirt in the video at the end of your flight. Uh, but for the best value, as I said, post just an unlimited armband uh, or an annual pass, even if you're in Florida for just two weeks. 
It is that cheap and that brilliant. Uh, and also every Friday and Saturday night at Old Town in Kissimmee, there is classic car cruise night. Yes! Something I absolutely adore in case you haven't noticed all the cars and stuff here. Uh, so I absolutely adore uh, Kissimmee cruise night. There's uh, lots of different cars. There's also line dancing uh, and everything. Beautiful and beautiful American cars. There's hundreds of them. Uh, the perfect place really to uh, dump your husband and kids uh, while you go to the shops, I think. Space, space, I'm gonna go to space, space, yes, please, space, 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 go to space, 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 I'm gonna go to space, 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 go to space, good boy. Space. Next up, space launches. This is gonna be a bit of a short section because it's not, you know, there's, there's only so much you can say. Uh, but Jetty Park is probably one of your best bets to view a shuttle launch, or not shuttle, but any rocket launch. Um, uh, and if the launch is cancelled, then you still have Jetty Park to enjoy, which is right next to Cocoa Beach. Uh, there's fantastic uh, wildlife to look at if you're after that. But uh, you can also, you know, that's manatees, eagles, ospreys, um, pelicans, tropical fish, turtles, jellyfish, occasionally, you know, dolphins, everything's there. So if you just want to watch that go by, you can. But there's also kayak uh, and bodyboard hiring. Uh, so it's it's a fantastic place uh, to go. Uh, also, do check out NASA's website before you travel to see if any rocket launches are scheduled for while you're out in Florida, because it is something you do not want to miss. The next up is eating. America, it is very good at that, isn't it? Place at eating. Um, hmm. But uh, KFC is a little bit different over there to, uh, to in the UK. Uh, so many tourists are taken by surprise by this, especially the British. Uh, aside from the original recipe, chicken and the extra crispy option, you can have it grilled if you prefer a healthier option. Uh, and then you can you know, have it, you know, and then there's sort of mashed potato and gravy. And it's a lot healthier, actually, than the British KFC. It, it, it surprises a lot of British tourists, but it is very, very nice as well. Uh, also, Olive Garden has been recommended to me by many British tourists, uh, so, uh, and I've tried it once or twice. It is quite a nice one. It is a bit expensive, but it is very nice. Uh, so do check their website. Cracker Barrel is also the only restaurant I've ever been in that ends in a gift shop. It also has an absolutely massive menu uh, that is completely stopped for, and also includes the option to build your own meal. So, I'm not complaining. I have really good food. Ponderosa Steakhouse is a real favourite of mine, as well as some other British tourists as well. Uh, it's just, it's really nice. They do steaks, they do fish, they do chicken, they do whatever you want. It also includes a buffet as well, um, and fantastic service, particularly on the one opposite Old Town. So anyway, I sent you. But also, the Golden Corral is probably one of the most, uh, you know, in terms of value for money, Golden Corral is probably up there as well, uh, especially with its lunchtime buffets. Uh, Golden Corral offers massive amount of variety, Chinese, Italian, you know, the steaks, the salads, there's huge desserts. Uh, it's a great buffet and really worth a visit as well. <laughs> Finally, last of the park stuff, what happens when it absolutely chucks it down, as it so often does in Florida? Well, if you're at uh, Epcot, then do go into the uh, interventions area. There's plenty of interactive stuff for the kids to keep kids occupied until it all dries up outside. Uh, also, if you're at Disney, go to Downtown Disney and enter Disney Quest. This is a five floor super arcade, super, super amusement arcade, uh, where the price of the games is included in the admission. And that makes me very happy because I can play lots of old 80s games again. And um, yay. Uh, <laughs> but do remember, uh, but most, you know, all the theme parks will shut uh, all the outside rides in the event of a lightning risk. Uh, and that is something you must bear in mind, particularly bush gardens. Usually if lightning is detected within five miles of the park, they will close the outdoor attractions. And this must be bear in mind when you plan your day. OK, I'm going to actually have to hold this because this is a very long piece on the school buses because the law is quite complicated and will take many British tourists by surprise at just how much legislation you can have on buses. I've got two pages of stuff on the school bus law uh, which has been taken from Florida's Highway Patrol so do check their website uh, as well. 
but the general rule is if you're going the same way as a school bus and it extends its little stop arm and flashes its red lights, uh, then what you must do is come to a full and complete stop behind those signs. Uh, this is for the protection of the people getting on and off the bus. Um, if you're going the opposite way, uh, then you have to stop in front of the bus. Unless you're on a divided highway, uh, and the one-way roadways are separated by an unpaved space at least five feet in width, uh, or you're on a divided highway and one of the roadways is separated by a physical barrier. So, uh, a barrier, when they say barrier, they mean a, a continuous permanent or semi-permanent obstruction that would make it very difficult to cross uh, over the road, so a vehicle or a pedestrian. Uh, so a chain link fence, concrete uh, abutment, but traffic cones, trees in a medium are not barriers. Painted lines, pavement markings, uh, and two-way left-hand turn lanes do not constitute a barrier. Uh, but an unpaved space, that's grass, dirt, gravel, water, between one or multi-lane roadways going in opposite directions. Sorry, I'm having to read this a bit, but uh, I suppose my other be as well lower or medium raised up, so it depends. Uh, well, paved sometimes refers only to concrete surfaces. Uh, in this context, any uh, hard-surfaced permanent ground cover. But if you, if you do have any questions about that, uh, then do check out Florida's Highway Patrol. They do have some nice diagrams here, uh, which, such as this one, which I did steal from the Florida Highway Patrol. I'm not entirely sure if you can see that, uh, but that basically shows you uh, exactly what it means. But you must express caution anyway, uh, whether you are on the divided highway and do not have to stop or not. Um, so thank you very much for watching. Uh, subscribe for more, uh, and hope you, you know, drop a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more. This is the Theme Park Guy.